Tonight we will go even unto Bethlehem to see this thing that has happened unto us in the city of David. A Savior is born, and he is Christ the Lord. We go to observe on a silent night, but silence is not the end. What God has done for us spills over into all of our lives tonight. Then we will join with angels and shepherds and other pilgrims adoring him whose birth we all can sing, even Jesus Christ our Lord. And let us be joined together now in the unison opening prayer printed in our order of service. Together, loving Father, tonight we share in the song of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, the peace of the quiet stable, the tenderness of the holy family, and the wonder of the wise men. Christ has come. Now, will you close the door of faith? Will you open the door of love in our world? Now might kindness be our gift and goodwill be in every greeting. Deliver us from evil by the blessing Christ brings. In the morning, makes us glad to be your children. On Christmas evening, bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts, forgiving and forgiven. For Jesus' sake, amen.
And please be seated. During this season of Advent, we have added to our anticipation and our hope and our desire to look and see the future that God is making by the traditional celebration of lighting candles successively on the Advent wreath. And we continue with that tonight as we will finish with the Christ candle at the end of this service. Join me then in the brief litany for the lighting of the first Advent candle. The true light that enlightens us all is coming into the world. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness has not overcome. And our gathering sentences, a word of God who was with God in the beginning and is God forever. Speak to us tonight, fill us with wonder, O Lord and King, light of the world. And join me now in the prayer of adoration and confession. Loving God, once you were poor and weak, lying in a manger, so now let us be moved to serve the weak and needy. Once there was no place for you in the end, so now make us watchful for those who need our welcome. As once the shepherd saw a great sign, now let us expect wonders in our lives. Once the angels sang, so now let us rejoice. Because Christ is the answer to sin, let us turn from our disobedience and let us embrace what is good and right and true. Forgive us, and on this night of all nights, renew in us the faith that inspires celebration. The gospel message is true every day, but it is somehow especially true on this night when we anticipate our Lord's coming, our Lord's coming to be with us, our Lord's coming to suffer as we sometimes suffer, our Lord coming to know our sin so that he might forgive us. Friends, be reminded this day and every day, and be glad in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. And we join now in the litany for the lighting of the second Advent candle. The true light that enlightens us all is coming into the world. On the night when Christ was born, the angels sang, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace. So let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since to this peace we are called. Amen. And it is a source of peace in our hearts and minds to know that we are forgiven. It is also a source of peace to know that we are surrounded by others who care as we do for Christ and for Christ's way in the world. And so let us greet one another. Let us share the peace, indeed the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And let us share a word of peace.
and anticipation of hearing God's word read and spoken to us in scripture, we always pray a prayer for illumination, asking that God's spirit might speak to us through the words we hear and speak. Let us all pray. Loving God, on this night, we do sense your powerful presence and the reality of it. Help us to set aside cares and concerns or uh, worries or difficulties and instead be fully, fully engaged by your presence and your power. In these things we pray in Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading is a scriptural harmony of our longing for a Savior. It is responsive. So sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. living in the land of deep darkness, the light is shed. Sing to the Lord and bless his holy name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. A shoot will come upon the stump Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. As for all the gods of the nations, they are mere idols. It is the Lord who made the heavens. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. Majesty and glory are before him. Beauty and power are in his sanctuary. Render to the Lord, you families of the nations. Render to the Lord glory and might. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Render to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices. O worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. Say among the nations that the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it can never be moved. And he shall judge the peoples with equity. Scattered the crowd of the imagination of their hearts. He has brought down the rulers from the thrones, but has lifted up the humble ones. Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar in all that fills it. Let the fields rejoice, and everything in them. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout with joy before the Lord. For he comes. He comes to judge the earth. Amen.
proceed now to the lighting of the third candle, traditionally a pink candle reflecting the joy of the season. The true light that enlightens us all is coming into the world. Our souls magnify the Lord, and our spirits rejoice in God our Savior. Amen. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house of and family of David he went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. I am Mary, tight as a drum, round as the lady moon calling out to me. Where is so far from home and my baby will be born tonight? Where can I lie down? Joseph has gone up to ask the innkeeper. I'm sorry, Joseph. Every space is taken, and there's nothing left to eat. I'm even out of figs and grapes. We'll all be hungry tonight. My guests, my cats, everyone except the stone-hearted emperor. I'll tell you what. Here's a light. Your Mary can share the stall with my old ox. I'm the ox and I keep yawning. My master works me so hard. There's not much hay in here, Mary. You'll be better off with a silly donkey. I'm the donkey. I'm not silly. You can stay here, Mary. Hey, do you want a mouthful of my straw and barley? At least you'll be warm in my stall, better than in the dark and the damp with all the wandering shepherds. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. I am the mother, Mary. My little lamb, my perfect stranger, I'll wrap you with these swaddling bands. I'll lay you in this manger. This is my child. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. (laughs) And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory be to God in the highest heavens and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Then the angel had left them and gone into the heavens. The shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. We're the shepherds. There was this light in the night sky, and the old moon herself went white. And there was a sky voice saying, Jesus, the Lamb of God, will be born tonight. You'll find him in Bethlehem, lying in a manger. Then this whole flock of light skips around us. Peace on earth, they sing. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. We're the the shepherds. What a journey. Little Jesus, here's a place. A round of sheep cheese and a palm fan. That's all we have. We're only poor shepherds. We're not rich or wise. 
When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it may, were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all of these words and pondered them in her heart. Shep, the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. The word of the Lord. That was so nicely done. Thank you, each of you, for your hard work in putting that together. That really speaks to us of what happened that night in Bethlehem. Thank you. Thirty-one years ago, our church at the time asked if our newborn daughter, Claire, could be the baby Jesus in the Christmas pageant. Ann and I remembered the line from the carol, the little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. And the part about not crying made us wonder if mm, if Claire really would be right for the part. We wondered if the child, our child, would be uncomfortable in the manger with all the straw. We wondered if the teenager who had been cast as Mary might drop our baby. The whole thing didn't sound like a very good idea to us to let our baby be in the Christmas pageant. Theologians wrestle with something that they call the scandal of particularity. The scandal of particularity. It goes something like this. How could God expect ever to conduct God's saving, rescuing business through a particular baby, Jesus? How could God possibly have determined to work the salvation of all things simply by visiting one Jewish girl who was kneeling at prayer? Or even why just one chosen people among all the peoples of the earth? Human life comes with certain threats and certain vulnerabilities, some bumps and bruises along the way. And all of that, bumps and bruises, seem decidedly unsuitable for Almighty God. So it is an amazing, even an illogical fact that we are celebrating tonight that all of humanity, so far as concerns humanity's future and our redemption, all of humanity has now narrowed down to this single divine stroke the child born to Mary and Joseph and laid in a manger. Well, you can easily, I'm sure, imagine how this would be too much for Anne and for me. We didn't even want to pretend that the hopes and fears of all the years were being somehow met in our little baby. And so, we did say no to this invitation for Claire to be the baby in the Christmas pageant. But what if we had said yes? Obviously, I've thought about this over the years. Saying yes is really so critical to the Christmas story. Do you see that? Mary, of course, famously said yes to the Holy Spirit of God. Joseph, too, says yes to the angel who appears to him in a dream. And then the angel lays this whole remarkable deal out on the table for Joseph. The angel says, and you will name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. What? What? Mary 
and Joseph are confronted there with this very scandal we're talking about. Our baby, our child. Ann and I said, no, it just didn't seem quite right to us. Too much riding on the whole thing. Too much on Claire. Too much. But Mary and Joseph said yes. Of course, they weren't the first ones to say yes. Remember Father Abraham, who is chosen to leave his family behind and be led by God to the promise? Or remember Moses? Remember the Hebrew people, one family invited to be God's own family. In a very human and really in a very kind of roundabout way, all of those people said yes, and God has done a great and saving work through them. There was one definite benefit that came to us from not having our newborn Claire on the Christmas Eve tableau. And you see, got to hold Claire in a snugly during the entire Christmas Eve service. And the tenderness and the perfection of the incarnation became real after all. I should talk. Pregnancy and birth are miracles. That's the sort of thing a husband says, I think. The, the soft, perfect skin on a baby's cheek, that's a miracle. Love is a miracle. And the closeness that a mother child a mother feels to her newborn child is, of course, a miracle. Anne can tell you this story a lot better than I'm doing, but she will tell you that that Christmas Eve was very, very special to her. It was profoundly beautiful to be holding the child. How close God has come to us. How tenderly the Lord God comes. How generous of God to be known to us in such an intimate way. Everybody loves a baby. Does everyone love God? No, they don't. But obviously, practically, they should. I especially love the way our godly play curriculum for children describes the biblical prophets. It says that the prophets of the Bible were people who came so close to God that God came so close to them that they understood what God wanted them to say and do. There's the scandal of particularity again, that Almighty God would choose to come so close. And you will name him Jesus, says the angel, for he will save his people from their sins. Actually, as it turns out, that's kind of an inside joke between Joseph and the angel. It turns out there were really a lot of babies named Jesus or Yeshua in the first century Palestine. The name was really a rendering of the Hebrew word Yeshua. That name means God or Yahweh saves. But God, of course, had particular plans in mind for this child. The inside joke Name him the same name as so many other little ones are being named. But God will surprise. God will do all of God's delivering work, all of God's saving work exclusively through this particular one. So the church didn't put little Claire into the manger. We weren't ready for that. I think they secured a rag doll for the infant. It was kind of a compromise, a rag doll in place of the real thing. Safer that way, you know. We were able to go on with Christmas without any worries. Everybody said it was okay. I just haven't really forgotten 
that night. And I haven't stopped wondering if maybe, maybe we missed an opportunity. So, a message. Don't, don't miss an opportunity. This miracle we celebrate tonight is a real miracle. God has set the baby Jesus in place so that you and I could come so close to God and have God come so close to us that we would know, that we would know God's gentleness and God's mercy, that we would know that God is not aloof and distant from us, that we could believe what we still really can't explain, his name is Jesus, and he will save his people from their sins. Find the miracle in your heart tonight. Find it and be amazed. God is with us. Hear and believe that miracle really is particular, just the same way that you, each of you, is particular. The miracle is for you. The Lord has come. And now let the earth receive her king. Amen. And let us pray. Lord, again today as every day, we pray in thanksgiving that you have made us your children. But tonight we have a special example of that, for you have sent us your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us in the Christmas celebration to recognize the wonder, the mystery, the goodness, the power of all of that, that our lives might be changed and changed for the better, that we might find ourselves so close to you that we would know what to say and do and believe. In these things we pray in Christ our Lord.
affirmation of faith this night is drawn from Scripture. Let us together say what we believe. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. No one has ever seen God. It is the only Son who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of the cross. Amen. And please be seated. We try to be a generous church, and not so that somebody would say, well, that's a generous church, but because we recognize that part of our responsibility in this world is to offer back to God what God has given to us. One of the special ways that we do that is through the Church's United in Christ Help Ministry. People regularly present themselves asking for financial support, and this has turned to be a, turned out to be a very responsible way for the downtown churches to share in meeting those needs. And so the offering tonight goes to that, to the Churches United in Christ Help Ministry uh, as administered through this church. And also you'll find inserted in the bulletin uh, offering envelopes for the one great, uh, for the, uh, rather the Christmas joy offering, which is an offering that supports retired church workers. God has invited us to live and to live fully, and a part of that full life is to be generous and thankful. Let us come before God now with our tithes and offerings.
loving God, on this night when you have given us so much, even your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we return to make this simple offering, receive it, bless it as it goes on its way, and through it we pray help us to grow ever more generous and ever more sure of your promise made and kept to us in Christ. For it is in his name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. The lighting of the fourth Advent candle. The true light that enlightens us all is coming into the world. All has taken place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, a young woman shall conceive and bear a child, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have beheld the light of his glory, glory as of the only Son of the Father. Amen. And friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ invites us to come and to be joined with him around this table. On Christmas Eve, we do think about our Lord's coming to us, coming to us so tenderly as a child, coming to be close to us in a very special way, even God incarnate in the life of a human being, so that we humans might have a closer, ever closer relationship to him and a, and a greater assurance of his love. And so it is when we gather around the table and we have that sensation of closeness to our Lord Jesus Christ that it is especially appropriate for Christmas Eve. This is a sacrament that we repeat again and again. We do it because we want to constantly be reminded of God's love and God's providence, God's gift to us. But above all, Really, God's presence with us, God's real presence, body, blood, congregation and people. Together we are the body of Jesus Christ. Let us all pray. Lord, we do thank you for the beauty and sanctity of this night. Thank you that you touch our hearts with the warmth of family connection and the goodness of faith, and the life of faith. And thank you most of all that you come to us as a child this night, that we might be connected ever more fully to you and to your love. As we gather around this table, we do pray that this bread might be for us the body of Jesus Christ. And this wine might be for us Christ's own blood, so that as we eat and drink at our Lord's command, we might be united with him in a common faith and purpose. And loving God, as we gather around this table, we do so aware that we are joining our voices with those in all times and all places who have called upon your name and have sung together. On the night when our Lord was betrayed, he sat at table with his friends, the disciples, and when he had given thanks of the meal, he took the bread and broke it and said, take and eat, do this remembering me. This is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you do this, do it, remembering me. And similarly, after supper, our Lord took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant, the new promise made in my blood 
for the forgiveness of your sins. Again, as often as you drink it, do this remembering me. It is a consistent miracle, one that we see repeated again and again, that broken bread, like Christ's broken body, feeds us, and wine poured out, like Christ's blood shed for us, gives us the refreshment of new life. And so we do gather and here meet Jesus Christ who meets us around this table. These are the gifts of God, and they are for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
And let us once again join our hearts in prayer. Let us all pray. Love, we, loving God, we recognize that our very existence depends on you and on your mercy. And so we are glad to celebrate that, that mercy tonight in candles lit and in songs sung, in the beauty of this sanctuary, in the warmth of our fellowship, in the meaning of the communion table and our gathering around it to receive sustenance. In all of those ways, we are deeply, deeply aware of your presence and give thanks for it. We pray for our church and for our community and nation and world. We pray that you will deliver those who are hurting and afraid, give comfort to those who are sick and troubled, and use us, use us as you will, to be your servant. As we have prayed and sung and given thanks for our Lord Christ, we do pray that you will help us now to receive him again into our hearts and minds. And hear us as we pray together that prayer our Lord has taught us when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. 